thank you for joining. We really appreciate your time and connecting today. Hold on tight because over the next half an hour, we're going to show you just how Dr. Migrate, Microsoft and Intel have joined forces to help organizations around the world accelerate their move to Azure. And the good news is you don't need an army of consultants or BAs drowning in spreadsheets to work out how to get there. I'm Andy Lyons, CTO for Dr. Migrate, and with me today is Kevin Johnson from Intel and Paul Leibnick from Microsoft. Probably the best way to start is just to give you a really good context of like the problem that we're solving and that a lot of customers face and exactly how we are overcoming that. The traditional approach is, I was kind of being cheeky earlier on when I said, um, you know, you can drown in spreadsheets. You literally can, and the data gets old really, really quickly because, you know, as soon as something changes, someone's needing to update a spreadsheet and that doesn't happen after, after too long. And there's typically lots of people and lots of effort. And that's where we said, hey, we can do something smarter, faster, less effort, better value. And that's where a data-driven approach come in with Dr. Migrate. And what Dr. Migrate is doing is rather than relying on people, it's relying on machine learning, data and I, essentially, you know, contemporary modern services um, that are available today to, to do this large crunching and processing of information and insights to make that really easy for customers, partners, um, your IT providers to be able to consume an action. So the way that it actually works is Microsoft have their own Azure Migrate appliance that gets installed into your data center and it runs in agentless data collection mode, right? So you don't have to install agents onto every server in your on your on-premise environment, which is fantastic. Then what it does is it securely sends the, the metadata associated to your servers into your own Azure tenant. So an Azure tenant just gets simply set up and the data gets sent into there. So the good news is data doesn't need to leave your own network boundary, so to speak, right? So it's not going to Dr. Migrate SaaS land or you know outside um, into some other entity. And then what happens with that is we have Dr. Migrate that uh, Microsoft through the assessment um, solution program will, will assist you to get configured. Um, and that's available in the Azure marketplace, right? So just like a PaaS service, it's a next, next, next click deploy. And what it does is it goes to work and does all the processing um, of the data that is being collected of your on-premise estate. And then literally within hours, it's bringing to life insights that would have taken, you know, teams and teams of people to do over a much longer period, right? And the cool thing is this data is also live. So as your environment, your network communications, your um, peaks and troughs, you're migrating all the way through from assess to that, you know, that, that final migration cutover, anything that changes in your environment, the data model is learning from that and presenting back those live insights for you. Then the way that it all comes together is Dr. Migrate has two parts to it. One is the user portal, and that user portal is where yourself and your partners have full access to be able to control the assessment, planning, and migration from this central location. Um, and we're going to have a look at that today. And then you've got the reporting suite, and as I've been mentioning, accessing to rich insights, everything from your overviews down to network rules, down to right sizing, down to wave planning, you name it. We're gonna take a look at it in just a moment. So we're gonna start with by exploring. You can see here in this particular environment that we're gonna take a look at, this is actually an anonymized customer, right? So that there's nothing specific, but the environment we're looking at is a real environment, which is in the retail uh, industry. We can see here that Dr. Migrate has already processed over 16 million different data points in order to be able to bring this together. So as we go into explore, the first thing we're gonna see here is this particular customer's drivers, or let's just say your drivers, right? So what we don't wanna do is just start with, hey, here's lots of insights. It's, you know, we aim to understand what is it that's important to you moving to the cloud? Is it um, your ability to be able to access new cloud services, your end of life, you concerned about end of life software? Is it consolidating IT tools? So it's being able to understand that through a simple Q&A in our user portal, but then that feeds into the data model to help drive and bubble up key insights that might be of interest for you. There's a number of things in Dr. M. From the left, we've got our executive summary, which is intended for exactly that. And we'll have a bit of a drive through here in a moment to see that, intended for your C-suite to really get a quick grasp of your environment. Discovery is where we can deep dive into your entire digital estate. Um, modernize shows you all your different modernization scenarios. Planning and TCO speak for themselves in terms of the insights that they'll show us there. So let's start with the digital estate. So from here, what we can see is 
a really concise view. So in this particular environment, we've got over 57 applications that have been mapped across nearly 700 servers. We can see the breakdown of the different types of operating systems, the distribution from physical to virtual. We also get the ability to see really clearly what the utilization is as well. So we can see um, breakdowns from the number of cores that are being used to the RAM. We can see really clearly here, it's very underutilized, especially in the core sense, right? And also in the RAM, only 19%. So really showing there's a lot of upsides in terms of right sizing. And then we look at things like readiness opportunities and so forth. But let's just move on and have a look at some of the insights. And bear in mind, executive summary, it's intended to start high and then it's going to move in as we get to the discover phase. From here, we get an automated view of all the key technology running in your environment. Most of the time, you'll talk to your IT leads and architects what's running. There's a lot of hearsay and conjecture. Here, machine learning using signature software mapping will actually determine exactly what's in your environment. So if you were running MySQL or Oracle, um, that would actually light up to show the number of instances that are running. And as you can see for SQL, Java, IIS, and so forth running here. It'll also show you platform tools, like are you running an old exchange server, Skype and um, domain controllers, patching servers. The, all these insights are used to not just show you what you've got, but as you're gonna see in modernization, it'll actually give you cloud alternatives. What can you be using instead of Exchange? What could you be using instead of a SQL traditional service? What we also do is break down your applications for you. So of your total apps, which ones are business critical apps? Which ones are IT tools? Which ones are COTS app? These are really important in the decision-making processes you're gonna see throughout um, when you do an actual migration planning and assessment. We then help map you into your application strategies because when you're figuring your move to the cloud, you need to figure out, look, what are we going to rehost? Like, are we going to migrate to the cloud? Are we going to keep some things on premise? Are we going to replace with uh, more modern cloud services or SaaS services? So Dr. Migrate's able to, via the user portal, um, identify workloads that you want to put into the particular strategies. And this all feeds all the way into our planning and our TCO as the flow and effect. We also help with sizing. So it's really important as you're planning your migration, and we're gonna see a lot more of that in the wave planning section, we break up uh, your applications into the respective sizes. And it's using machine learning again, looking at hundreds or thousands of data points for every application to figure out the actual complexity of that particular app. And that's going to really feed into, your, into the wave planning to, to give you better and more accurate a sense of how long things are actually going to take to, to migrate. We can also see sustainability. It's a key thing that a lot of C-suite and organizations are interested in these days that we also are able to provide straight out of the box as well. Hey, just to jump in on that, Andy, and you, know, you touched on it, right? And to add emphasis, what is increasingly becoming a, a key initiative for CIOs across the world. Now, uh, in 2020, Microsoft announced bold commitment and a, a detailed action plan to become carbon negative, zero waste company, water positive, that protects more land that it uses by 2030. And it says it on that slide there, which is great. So look very much aligned to that. I love that we're able to show customers the positive benefit to the planet in the form of measuring a reduction of carbon emissions when migrating, modernizing from on-premise into the Microsoft cloud through Dr. Migrate. It's, it's really cool. Thanks, Andy. Let's actually do a deep dive now. So if I go to the discovery section, what you can see here is your full end-to-end -end suite. So this is kind of like your flight center. What you can do here is select your application and that could be any application in your environment, right? So if I just select any application, what it'll do is first of all, bring up a whole heap of uh, telemetry about it the number of in-servers broke down by environment, its complexity, the modernization, potential optimization, blockers, and more, right? But then what you can do is every one of these different tabs allows you to deep dive into the components of that particular application, right? So we've chosen the Aspen app here. And by the way, we can also isolate that and just look at the servers that are related to the development environment, prod environment or test environment, all environments equally as well, all with the click dynamically done. If we have a look at the app components, what it's doing here, it's first of all telling that Aspen is communicating with 14 other key applications um, split between IT tools and just business line of business applications. It's showing us platform services that it's connected to, the different AD servers and uh, SCCM patching servers. 
And it's also showing us key components that it's found on a per server from Commvault agents to SQL server to Java being installed and breaking down the machines that that's actually deployed onto. But what we can do from here is we go to servers. Then what we can see is all the servers in detail that are associated with the Aspen application, right? So I can see the particular servers, their individual usage, which ones are out of support, which ones are coming, are nearing out of support, their overall utilization. And as we step through some key things, shows us the exact VMs that are ready for migration, no blockers moving to Azure, ones that might have conditions. If they do have conditions, calls them out, we can drop deep dive into. Also shows us our utilization details, right? Being able to see which VM is using the most cores, which is the most underutilized, overutilized, highest IOPS, or with a click, it just dynamically filters for you as well. And again, it's real-time data. We've also got end of support. This is uh, an important one as well, which we're able to break down and show exactly which operating systems are out of support, nearing end of support as well in a, in a really clear way. Yeah, and just to add to that, Andy, so as you mentioned, super important. So Windows Server end of life deadline is October 2023, as it says on the slide. And SQL Server 2012 uh, has reached that stage already in, in July. So after those dates, you know, just to emphasize that, that software will stop receiving regular patches and critical security updates. So whether you're looking at upgrading or acquiring extended security updates, planning for that can take time. So the visibility here is great, right? So. For those that aren't aware, extended security updates is effectively a license uh, which yeah, allows you to keep receiving critical security updates for up to three years. The great news is, and if you're not aware, if you choose to migrate those systems to Azure, you'll receive those updates for free. Yeah, perfect. And that is a huge value prop for a lot of customers who are running on some aging workloads, obviously, over time as they've organically been growing their, their business. Um, look, breakdowns of operating systems and also individual servers as well. So you can select an individual server associated to this application and it will show you everything from the NICs, the storage, migration blockers. You can search for software that's running on it, um, drill down into network telemetry for that VM and more, right? So um, all just again um, given to you on, on a silver platter, so to speak, for your environment for that particular app. But look, some of the other key things that we'll drill through into here, I go to um, the networking section for this application. I get detailed overviews, um, really clear breakdowns of, you know, what applications is the Aspen app talking to? And I can see exactly the other applications that it's talking to, broken down to the VM, broken down to the IP address. There's lots of advanced views that you can drill into, you know, filtering by port, excluding platform tools into the views, detailed network maps. Um, all the way through to firewall exports, right? So what are the different firewall rules that are associated to the particular application or an environment, all automatically curated in here, which you can export as well, right? So not just for assessment, really helping you with that full migration journey that um, we're all aware of um, really needs access to these smarts. Beyond that, if your application's running databases, it'll show all the databases that are running um, on there, what it's found, if it's in support, out of support, as we mentioned, um, and it's not just doing SQL, it's doing Postgres, Oracle. It'll detect any type of databases and lay that out. It's just relevant to the particular application I've got filtered at the moment. It'll also show you modernization, like which SQL databases can be modernized to a PaaS service, right? So you can move from a SQL um, you know, standalone running on, on a server 2012, you could move that and many other versions to SQL Manage Instance, a PaaS version. So it'll show you ones that are high touch, low touch, allow you to deep dive into the individual databases if need be, um, and also show you consolidation scenarios. Like you could go from 31 servers for the Aspen application down to zero, running on pure PaaS, and showing you what those saving benefits are in different scenarios as well. Now, our Modernization Insights gives us a programmatic look of exactly what opportunities we have for the particular application. So we can see here that Aspen is running instances of Java and SQL Server, all of which have got modernization opportunities that you can run in Azure, like equivalent PaaS services. So if you didn't know, you can actually run a Java uh, app on an Azure app service plan. You could even run it in a container or an Azure function. And as I was mentioning before with SQL Server, running it on SQL databases and managed instances. The other cool thing is too, you can right click, drill through, and it'll show you the exact servers that are running it. It'll also show you key benefits 
and architecture links in, and guides to going from Java to App Service Plan. And you can do that for any technology that Dr. M detects to be able to find out more about that as well. And it'll also show you IT tools like platform tools. It's detected, you know, Azure Backup, or sorry, better said, Commvault and Zabbix from different tooling and showing you what the modernization options there, because a lot of your legacy IT tools, Microsoft have done an awesome job to completely, you know, hands-free management, doing that via the equivalent of, of PaaS alternatives as well for you. So Dr. M's also bubbling up those insights. On the topic of insights, we have a dedicated advisor section. So for your particular application, what Dr. Migrate's doing here is bubbling up a whole heap of advisories from, you know, things that we found out about your application that your migration engineers might want to know about from servers with a very high number of network connections that are going to really impact the way you do your firewall management and your, your, your cloud network configuration to showing different types of traffic, high disk space, high IOPS, so it's essentially looking at every machine and looking for certain profiles and patterns to being able to call out. And you can simply click on the particular um, call out or insight and it will show you the server. And again, if you wanted, you could drill through into that particular server to find out more. But the other interesting thing here is the complexity advisor. Dr. M is looking at every single application and categorizing it for you. And it's showing you the complete radar based off the number of servers, environments, if it had blockers, a whole heap of data points and shows you what was the reason for actually driving it to a particular level of complexity. So you've got that full transparency as well. So we'll jump into optimization. Now, this is a really important one. Now, I love this because this is where a lot of the key challenges for customers is often, you know, um, critical workloads, maintaining performance, or obviously cost. How can we help you move to the cloud whilst really not just maintaining cost profiles, but reducing that. And that's where we've really fused the wisdom of Intel and the smarts of Dr. Ram together to be able to do something pretty special for you. So, but I might throw to you, Kevin, to be able to share about the, some of the smarts that's gone into what we're seeing here. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Dr. Migrate, with the help of Intel, helps you make it simpler. It's very complex today. We've seen the complexity as we walk through the tool this is the complexity that you work with and live with every day. Once you balance out cost, performance, latency, regulatory compliance, security, as your variables and metrics of how you consider a move, we are here to help take the complexity out of that. Picking the right server, the right CPU, the right memory, the right network configuration, the right applications to move and how to move them. Dr. Migrate and Intel are here to help you. Optimization at the server level is critical. You, you need to know, you need to trust the performance of the server, the CPU memory configuration of network, uh, the storage, in order to make sure that you're getting the right cost, using the infrastructure correctly, making sure the right security metrics are being met for your application, your application move. Intel has done a lot of the heavy lifting. We do benchmarking. We take the benchmarking and do optimization from optimizations, configuration, configuration, more innovation, really to bring you the virtual machine that works best for your workload. Working very closely with Microsoft Azure to select the VM or the instance and the configuration around it. It is quite an involved process. We take time to go deep within our microprocessors for the application. We take time to go deep with the configuration around the platform, making sure the memory is correct, making sure the network settings are correct, making sure the storage settings correct for the application, that you both get the right configuration to start and the scalable configuration. The ability for us to actually innovate is very high. And what Intel brings you is truly Intel innovation with optimized cloud workloads for the server, for the instance, for the virtual machine to you and you can trust that. Now you take that and you feed it into Dr. Migrate and what you've seen is a trusted infrastructure tool showing migration options landing on the best server configuration possible and Intel's doing that with you with Dr. Migrate with Microsoft Azure. Now current cloud migration tools they are complex as well 
Many of them do not use the benchmark capability of going into the platform, going into the server in any great detail. And that what needs to happen. That's what brings Intel into the equation with Dr. Migrate to make it very valuable. Dr. Migrate, the tool here is very unique in its approach. At the end, you'll have an optimized TCO, total cost of ownership. The customer yourself is looking at this and say, can I trust it? With the three of us combined, Dr. Migrate, Intel, Microsoft, we bring that to you. All of this is part art, part science, that we can bring that incremental improvements and the best cost platform to you as the migration concludes. And that includes the hardware, the software, the OS, the application for best cost, best capability, best security. And we're happy to work together with Microsoft and Dr. Migrate with this. Hey, thanks a lot, Kevin. Really uh, good insights into the work that's gone into what we see here. And look, what we are looking at here is a really good example, right? So if, again, with the particular application, we've got selected and we could, by the way, just do this across the entire digital estate. What we can see here really cleanly is the number of cores that we're currently being used on premise for the Aspen application, right? And it just taking the as is footprint, it looks like 332 cores um, broken down by the Azure compute cost, Windows licensing cost and SQL licensing cost, right? That they're all based on the number of cores as Oracle does the same too um, from, the, from the core count or, or a similar model. Now, with the Intel optimization, what customers can do per application, choose either a cost profile or a performance profile as in what's the most important to you. And in the cost, what we've been able to do here is the benchmarking that Kevin was referring to, we've gone from 332 cores down to 182. Now, the first thing is it's reducing our Azure compute cost, but it's also having a huge savings on the licensing cost associated to it. Because again, it's bound to cores. Now, you look that, at that for one application. Now, think of your entire environment, your entire um, digital estate. How many licensing core savings that you're going to get across the board um, just through this optimization? And it's not just about the, the cost, it's also performance. As you can see, even with this core reduction, a, a cost conscious one, we're actually still able to get an increase in the performance just by selecting the right optimized SKU. Not, not all, and SKU is a, a term for VM because not all VMs are considered equal. Um, but now look at this when we hit performance. What performance is showing us is maintaining the same number of cores, but again, using an optimized SKU selection. And by the way, all the SKUs are laid out here from the original to the best max performance to cost optimized, but we're able to get a 3.56% increase increase in performance whilst maintaining the pretty much the same cost profile. We're talking an extra $1,341 difference, but we've got nearly a three, well, over a three times cost improvement, right? So pretty amazing business critical workloads, being able to, to, to squeeze out this type of performance gain or being able to really just balance your cost depending on you know what your real requirements are. So yeah, super excited. This goes a long way to being able to help customers reduce, you know, cost and that 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 step into the cloud just straight out of the box here. And some of the work we're doing at the moment, we focused on um, SQL workloads because we know that's such a big thing for a lot of customers. We're working with Intel Labs across different workloads from uh, web applications to Oracle. Much more is coming in the coming months to be able to do that across your, your entire different workload type. So yeah, awesome team effort. So let's take a quick look at the user portal. And the user portal is how you interact with the data. So we are essentially calling it applying the customer lens. So what drives the reporting that you've just seen here is the data collection and any input that you want to put into it. And from our user portal, you've got everything from our discovery sections to planning all the way through to migration, right? All at your fingertips. And what you can do here is anything from adding new applications, clicking on existing applications, putting in application owners, tagging things with metadata, um, selecting environments, adding servers that might have been missed where you want to associate, all there in one stop shop rather than putting it into Excel spreadsheets your changes are automatically fed into that live data model. But the main thing that I wanted to show you within, and there's lots to show you inside the user portal, but is also the wave planning. Like, this is critical. 
He saw the network telemetry that Dr. M's able to collect, right? What Dr. M's machine learning is doing, it's looking at the millions of different network connections or possible millions, and then it's um, using algorithms to actually group applications by what we call network affinity, which applications have got a really strong network affinity together. It's Dr. M's using a number of other uh, characteristics, but it's essentially using those characteristics to group applications into um, waves together. So then what you can do is actually start to focus on migrating applications that have got a strong network affinity affinity together straight out of the box so you don't have to figure that out. You know how I was talking early on around the complexity of applications? Because Dr. Migrate's able to figure out which applications are small, medium to large, you can see here, um, because it's figured that out, it's able to then use that to extrapolate the time to actually migrate individual applications based off their size. And if you or your partner want to actually change it and say, you know what, for us to migrate a low complexity app, that's actually only going to take us eight hours or 20 hours, whatever, whatever it might be, and the entire plan will re-baseline. Then you've got the ability to be able to change the order of waves and move things around and get in there and say, you know what, we don't want to move this particular application in this wave and simply click on it, remove it out and add others in there equally as well. Um, so yeah, what I wanted to show you in the, the user interface side is being able to really interact with the data instead of spreadsheets. Um, and it's not just about assessment. We also help you with the migration um, because Dr. Ram has got all the data you've just put into the wave planning. It knows, you know, per application or per wave, better said, which apps have you assigned to a wave. You can actually assign playbooks to them and use our tracker to be able to track the progress of migrations with individual workflows as well from start to finish. So as an example, I'm tracking this particular application, Helios. I can see it's 75% complete and you can add your own phases, your own steps in there from start to finish that you can assign to um, individual people that will go ahead and complete those particular activities. And probably the last thing just to tie it all back in together for you is, you know, we take all the, those insights, we take all that wave planning, um, all the application strategies, and then play that back to you. Like, what is it going to cost at the end of the day? And you've got the full transparency and confidence in that data, that live data, um, to be able to see the different cost profiles. You can also work with the specialists from Microsoft to be able to even help further tailor that for you um, and see the different comparison scenarios as well um, through the different reserved instances, through hybrid benefits that you can apply to really demystify um, that cost profile for you. So look, really, really excited to be able to get this into the hands of so many people around the world and, um, and truly help reduce the complexity of what is otherwise an extremely daunting task by using the, the power of machine learning and really combining some of the, the, the biggest names and smartest people out there in the world to, to fuse all that wisdom together. Well, that sure was a whirlwind. So you might be wondering where to from here? Well, look, you can learn more about Dr. Migrate and the technology side, or you might actually be a Microsoft partner and interested in figuring out what are the channel opportunities associated with using Dr. Migrate directly yourself. Look, for any of those types of questions, you can reach out to us at info at drmigrate.com um, and we'll be happy to, yeah, field anything you might have. Hey, Andy, that might have been a whirlwind, but uh, i got to say, and pardon the pun, but every time I see that walkthrough, I'm just blown away by um, the amazing tools that you guys have created. And um, I just want to you know, pause here before I get on to the rest, just to say a huge thank you. Two ways to take this forward. Talk to your account team, if you, if you know who they are here at Microsoft. Have a chat with them, um, register your interest yeah, directly through that channel, or you can hit that URL that's on the screen. Go through the uh, register your interest through the web form and just be sure to enter Dr. Migrate in the partner form when submitting and that'll come through and, uh, and we'll be in touch. But um, yeah, thanks for your time today and over to you, Andy. Hey, thanks a lot, Paul, for kind words as well. Yeah, we do love our partnership and being actually able to make a big difference to, to our customers. But yeah, look, thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks a lot, Kevin, for joining and everyone else for connecting in and I uh, hope to see you migrating soon. Thank you.